is uh, become the president. I'm missing the award ceremony at St. Stanislaus. That's so the price just, you pay. All right, y'all ready? Just us two tonight. Uh, uh, meeting for order. Y'all will stand, please. We'll have a uh, reciting of the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a few minutes of silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, to the, to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God. God Attendance is. I want to introduce yourself, Greg. Commissioner Ward Two, Greg Poindexter. Uh, Ward Three, Chad Whitney, and Jean Willie. Recently married. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, motion to uh, approve the minutes of Monday, May eighth, two thousand twenty-three. I'll make a motion. Motion by three, seconded by two. Two. Any further discussion? Uh, just one second. Yeah, I'll give you a second. No. Did uh, we advertise for the, um, to review the comprehensive plan? Uh, not yet. That, um, that'll be advertised next week. Okay. For the, for the next meeting. So the way the minutes read, that's um, we tabled the rest of the agenda and then we're going ahead with the advertising. It just hadn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, good. I'll, uh, I'll vote to approve it. So. Uh, vote? Yep. Two? Yes. Three? Yes. Uh, passed. Two, zero. Okay. Um, okay, item number three, the adoption of a recommended uh, amendments to the City of Waveland Zoning Ordinance 349, um, Section 401.4, uh, the word uh, temporary structures including but not limited to shipping containers, storage containers, and the like are prohibited as permanent residential dwellings but, not, but may be used as a temporary storage during new construction of a permanent primary structure with a building permit. Uh, section, second one, 401.5, approved water supply and sewage disposal for the building. Buildings changed the word building to permanent habitable uh, dwellings. The new wording will be, it shall be unlawful to construct any permanent habitable dwelling or occupy any mobile home or manufacturing home without water supply and sewer disposal. I was just clarifying that so someone can't live in a temporary or an accessory building. <coughs> Section 401.6, reference the definition of a nuisance and, and the description of the new wording will be no nuisance as defined in Section 302.7 shall be allied, allowed as a permanent, conditional, or non-conforming use. Section 401.8, residential planning development projects. Subsection C.2, Quote, wherever there is an abrupt change in use, i.e. residential to commercial, um, <coughs> it is desirable that a buffer area of open space protecting plant, uh, an open, uh, a buffer area of open space or protective planting or solid fence be placed between the land uses which will protect each use from the undesirable effect of, the, of each other. Section 404, regulations for auto-oriented commercial establishments. This type of business will, will be allowed only in C-3 highway commercial district. Section 401.8, accessory buildings in R1 single residential district <coughs> uh, increases the allowable sizes of accessory buildings contingent upon the size of the lot. The sizes would be a 500 accessory building for all properties up to 8,500 square feet in lot size, 750-foot accessory building for properties 8,501 
to 12,500 square feet, 1,000 square foot uh, accessory building for properties, 12,501 square feet to 15,000 square feet. 15,000 or one square feet properties will, will be allowed up to a 1,500 square foot accessory structure. Any requests for accessory structures over 1,500 square feet will be required to submit a conditional use request. Um, again, the purpose of this is to um, allow people uh, a little more flexibility in um, applying or building accessory buildings. Um, and you'll see tonight we already have two of them uh, that are being requ requested. So in the future, if this is uh, adopted, you won't have to be doing that. And lastly, the implementation of a 3% sales tax on all short-term rentals and hotel motels within the city. These are all proposals we will recommend to the, or, uh, board, the board uh, for their consideration, hopeful approval. First okay. Tuesday in June. So can I um, ask a question about sure. it? Sure. Um, so on uh, section 401.5, or wait, I'm sorry, uh, section 401.4, Four, um, so we talked about in the last meeting, we talked about um, where we would not issue the CO if we had an outstanding tree issue. That I think we later. should put the same language on the shipping containers and anything used for storage for during construction. We don't issue the CO till it's removed. I think that would be a reasonable um, to, to remove them before we move forward with issuing the CO. I think that would kind of be in the spirit of it because if not once it's there we're gonna have trouble getting rid of it that might be considered a significant change to what we approved okay. uh, maybe I would we can suggest that when this goes to the board you just stand up and consider that okay yes yeah, since this is a recommendation if we go to the first meeting in June we can ask them to put in that stipulation okay when they approve All right. yeah. yeah and you can you can reference because they will also have for their approval that, that same wording on the tree. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because I, I think maybe we ought to, like, as we look at the comprehensive plan, you know, that's a, a tool we have. On okay. section 401.8, we use the word it is desirable. 401.8. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think it desirable maybe doesn't give the meaning that we're looking for. I think it would be required. Required. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, and maybe we can just put notes. I don't know if, when we make these recommendations. Yeah, I mean, we have I can to amend them. I can just put that, that was a typo. Yeah. That was a typo okay. on my part. Yeah, no, because, yeah, I mean, you were the one that, that talked about this and, you know, you wanted it to be, you know, Yeah, I mean, I think anytime we have an abrupt change in zoning, we ought to uh, at least make an effort to, it's easy to do during the permitting process. Okay, um, now the reference request. You got any more? I'm sorry. Is there Somebody has some co comment? Comments? No. Do I have so a... Why don't you come up, please? I just have a question. That will be, be an approval. I have a bigger piece of property and a little bit bigger shed. That's why I came for the boat. You're fine. So when will that happen that you think that maybe when you have a couple of acres, you could have 900 square feet, right? Right. So... Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're fine. You would fall... Well within this. That's why I was going yeah. So in the future, yeah, they actually have it. Yeah, they have it on the agenda. Which okay, is back there. I didn't get it. Um, <laughs> now this is a recommendation board, so they make the recommendation. Stop it. <laughs> it may be me. <laughs> so they make the recommendation, and then it goes before the board um, of mayor and aldermen the first Tuesday in June. And then it has a 30-day wait period to make sure that nobody does an appeal. Okay. After the 30 days is when it becomes in effect. Okay. So you're looking at like beginning to mid-July. Which means if you came back, no, I'm if you had waited to July, yeah. you wouldn't have had to been here tonight. Yeah. yeah, the goal is to try to remove as yeah. many yeah, that's a whole requests idea. for variances as possible. Yep. Okay. Maybe it goes this way with it. My name is Gary Garcia, Garcia Sun Developments. I think I didn't realize y'all were doing it. I think it's a great thing because we're getting a lot of phone calls about it now. And the way to beat it is to put it just a lean to on an elevated home. You can put a lean to an elevated home and go 3,000 square feet. It, 
I could stretch out the gentleman that we're talking to that he's wanting to do a nice car in the back to make it probably look Just good. Just along the roof, good we can, Yeah, we can we can come off the back of his mm -hmm. roof and go out yep. 50 feet. Yep. We can do 2,500 square feet, which you get. I'm getting a lot of phone calls to that because they see the 500 square feet, and then that's not a high appeal. No. You, know, you build a nice carport, it looks good. So yeah. I, I really think y'all are making the right move. Thank you. Okay, first, um, with, um, you know, just feedback on that. If you heard about, we're talking about the comprehensive plan where we're going to advertise for that, make sure everybody comes to that because that's deciding what way one's going to be going forward. And I really want a lot of feedback from the, the, the community. The comprehensive plan? Did y'all hire a person? In 2005, Nine? it was done and Nine. updated in, by 2009. In 2009, I think Slaughter and Associates was the company that did it. That's, I yes. think, who did it. It was, it was a law firm, law, uh, Slaughter and Associates. But what, what I was concerned with when I read it, like we were trying to update the zoning, right? But if we don't know what we want to be, it's hard to update the zoning because then we're just throwing darts all over the place. Yeah. So I want to go back and understand what we want to do for each zone, right? Like if we're going to change the sign ordinance, we should understand do we want to promote small businesses or big businesses because their sign constraints are different. So taking the time to go back and look at what we want our city to be, I think is important. But the only way to do that right is to get as many people here for these meetings to speak and I say, know about the comprehensive plan. yeah, so yeah. It, this is just about to be advertised. So get the word out. Cause I'd like to see this room full. It would be great. Yeah. We need a plan to have a plan. I mean, that's it, exactly. And, and we need people's feedback. I, I don't want to be the person who's deciding all this. I want to know what the, the residents of Waveland want because this is our city, right. you know. So that's uh, that that was my feedback. So my pitch to redo yeah, the conference in place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This so was actually to... adopted April twenty first, two thousand and ten, and I think two thousand eleven was the last time anybody looked at it. Um, you know, like one of the things they recommend was the and it was the uh, continuation or extension of the walking path out on the beach. And so some things have been approved. Um, I would hope that um, we would turn this into a, a yearly comprehensive plan where you set some goals for that year, realistic goals, and then see what happens and then update it the next year, follow up and, and, and pursue it, you know, because like I say, no one's looked at it in 12 years. I'd like to do a 20 year plan for the city. You know, the things we want to see. So, for example, when we looked at the, the comprehensive plan last time, there's a desire in the plan to have an alley, an open alley between here and the end of Coleman on this side. We got a little problem with that. We have a house and several pieces of private property. So it's really not consistent in what I think the city wants. So it needs to be updated. And then from there, we can update the zone. Yeah, one, one of the things they wanted was that park, town, the town green. So that kind of and some things, some things haven't been achieved. I mean, some progress has been made in our city, but we should me measure it, get the metrics, understand what we accomplished, what we did, and do we still want to go in the direction we've been going? So um, thank you all. If you all do come out, I appreciate it. Um, do we need to vote to approve the recommendations? Yeah, I need a first and a second. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the recommendations. Second. All right. Motion by three, seconded by two. Any further discussion? We'll vote one. I mean, vote two. Yes. Vote three. Yes. yes. Okay. Pass two, two, zip, two to nothing. Okay. Item number four. Scott Shaw, owner of the property commonly known as 207 Music Street, um, has made an application for conditional use to construct an accessory structure over 500 square feet. The proposed accessory structure will be 900 square feet and will meet all setback requirements. Is Mr. Shaw here? No. No. How large is Mr. Shaw's lot? About 15,000 square feet. Yeah, he's, uh, actually, he's yes. actually got a combination of three. So if you look at your map, the little uh, geo portal, you mm -hmm. see where his house is. He wants yep. to put the accessory structure on the lot just to the right. And then he also has the property to the rear of his house. Is that a single parcel? 
No, it's three different parcels. Okay, that'd be the only thing, uh, according to what we're looking at, that needs to be brought into a single parcel. Because if not, we're building an accessory structure on a separate piece of property. Okay, so you want to make that condition that you combine them? Yeah. I think that way. If not, then we're, we just denied one last week for trying to build an accessory structure before we build a house. There is a, but there is a, a verbiage in the zoning ordinance that says, conti uh, what is it? Continual, fr it's a... Um, Multiple lots Continue of continual, frontage. yeah, continual frontage of common ownership. Which is what that which is. Which is what that is. It, it basically considers them one property even though they're not tax parcel combined. Because there are some parcels where a, um, an owner will have two separate parcels, but they're in different subdivisions and they cannot be combined. If, if so, it is, it is. So if it's, if it's a, able to be combined, you want to put that yeah, as a Yeah, it is desirable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, to now, you're, you're aware that it'll take the county about a year and a half. Um, no, no, I'm telling you, I've got seven parcels, and I applied for it eight months ago, and it still has the other owner on them. Yeah, it goes into effect immediately when you go to the tax assessor. It just doesn't show up on the map. They update the map only like once a year. And I don't want to cause any problems, but also we don't want, ex uh, under what we saw, we don't want accessory structures being built on property that can be sold separately. Well, that, that's what I was going to suggest. You, uh, you can put a condition on whatever we say. Yeah. And the so condition is that he cannot sell it separately. Uh, there was a case that we ran into at the last meeting mm -hmm. over on St. Anthony and Felgraves. It where was an it something was an like this exactly happened, and they one. sold the property with just the accessory building on it. So, let, so let's so just make, make it in there that, that we ask him to do it. I yeah, doubt so that this the, is the two separate neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah, the condition is to combine the properties if able, but if they're not able, then they have to be sold together. That's fine. And it is what, around 15,000 square feet. Falls, it's so, a normally, other than that, that being on a separate parcel, we would have not seen this, right? That would have not come in front of the, the board. It would have met the requirements, the new requirements. The new no, ones? So the new ones, but yeah. they, yeah. they yeah. don't have it's, any. It's over 15,000 yeah. square feet. But I'm saying so in the spirit of what we're doing, yeah, in, the we would have what, removed in the spirit of what we're doing, he would have had the square footage to okay. not come before the board with the new. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That means that, that in, if this gets approved, then we'll have solved that problem. Did anybody, we didn't ask if anybody wanted to oh, talk well, about got, uh, Your name's not Scott, is it? Yeah, I'm got the, no, okay. no, Scott. Anybody else want to uh, speak pro or con? Yes. Hearing none. Um, did we have a motion to? We'll make a motion to approve it with uh, those conditions. Uh, do I need to say what the conditions are? Or you got I, wrote, I wrote it down, but if you want to um, make a motion with the condition We'll make a motion that uh, to approve with the condition that the two pieces of property be uh, added to the same parcel or combined to be on the same parcel. So we're not um, uh, building an accessory structure on a separate parcel. And if that is not possible, then we, there's a condition that the two pieces can't be sold separately. Okay. Have a second? No. Huh? No. No. No, I don't want a second with the conditions. I think it's perfectly fine, and we're get, we're nitpicking too much. He's not going to sell the property. He lived there for 15 years. He just wants a place to park his vehicle. So I'm not going to second. I'm, I'm fine with the the application. I'm not fine with the conditional rules you put in. So where do you go from there, Chairman? <laughs> and it's denied. The, um, again, as I said, we had an exact same situation. Don't care. Where they did sell it. Don't care. Different person. Now, do we know for a fact that these haven't been combined? He just, he just purchased it about eight, nine months ago. So I don't know if it's been combined yet. Well, can we just... Uh, table it then and ask for some information if he's, he may even just not have a problem with doing it oh he well he, he will but that's okay i'm not gonna say i i don't know i'm just saying you know 
And that gets back into we don't want accessory structures on separate properties. And I understand he wants this it. This is one of the lifetime wave on residents that just says, well, I just should build it and don't worry about it. He's going through the program and y'all are setting more rules and I don't think it's going to make a difference one way or the other. Sure, come forward. Gene, can you pull a permit on a parcel that does not have a house to build a accessory structure? Not, no. not by itself, no. Okay, so it's not even from coming but no, he owns the property with the, with the primary structure next continuous door. Yeah, but it's not the same continuous well, front. Continuous front. But it's continuous front. There, right. is, so there is something. There, there's, yes. Yeah, there's a separate con condition in the zoning ordinance that says if you have continual Continue frontage of common ownership. Yeah. So honestly, even if you put it, if he has a 100 feet of road frontage, he can go down to the courthouse and split it after you make him combine it without anybody's approval, as long as he has 100 feet of road frontage, and then he's back to square one. Pretty much. And that's why I said no. So, really so are you okay with just putting the condition that they can't be sold separately? Yeah, I think it, I don't okay. think it's necessary, but if that's what you want to put, I'll All right, second that. Okay. Okay. Because so, he's so. not going to sell any of it. No, I, 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 what I want is just not to have a separate parcel because I think it costs a house. Problem. Problem. All right, that's so that. I'll change my motion to. Uh, approve it with the condition that um, they can't be sold separately. The two the two pieces of property cannot be sold separately. Do we have a second? Yeah, second. second. By two, one vote. Two? Yes. Three? Yes. Passes two zip. All right, item number five, Chad Rhodes, owner of the property commonly known as 645 North Beach Boulevard, has made an application for conditional use to construct an accessory structure over 500 square feet. The proposed accessory structure will be 901 square feet and will meet all setback requirements. Mr. Rhodes. Fine, thank you. Um, my wife. Court and I just finished building a home with uh, Mr. Garcia uh, earlier this year. Two children at St. Stanislaus, three are going to start at Holy Trinity, so this is home. Um, we have a, a lot that, a little over 30,000 square yeah, feet. Yeah, big sucker. Uh, 4,500 square foot home, and uh, with that many kids, one of them started driving soon. We're just, you know, 901 square foot carport, open air, completely open. Um, Garrett's did a great job building our home. It's going to match identical to roofing, the siding, I mean the siding and the gables. Mm -hmm. um, and any specific questions, he, I know, wouldn't mind answering. The slab and the dirt work was done for this carport when we built the home, so there shouldn't be any drainage issues. Um, just to have a little more, a little more space as we accumulate kayaks and golf carts and mm -hmm. covered area with boats. the kids and boats and just uh, old cars. trucks, old cars. <laughs> in the works um, um, just to him there is a uh, part of the ordinance that about the height of the the gable the mean roof height has to be 15 feet 15, 15 feet. feet the mean mean roof height okay just to let you you're aware of that so means not the ridge though it's no no, it's no. Between. halfway down yeah halfway down so we are if I'm Garrett Garcia um, so we are 12, it's an eight on 12, it's 17 foot wide, so it's eight, so you're about six foot, eight, 12, yeah, six foot. So 18 foot to the ridge, so come down three, we're 15 feet. Yeah. We need to make sure that the, the ridge does not go above 15 feet. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's easy. The mean, no yeah. The mean. Yeah. Okay. It's so he actually, there's a drawing, I don't think it did it. I don't even see it. You don't we have saw it. Okay. It's in the back of him, like. Okay. No. Anyway. No, no, I didn't have that one, I just had the site plan. I just have this one. Did yeah. we have any, any other neighbors here no, to no, talk about that. it? Here's the actual okay, drawing so of the building. building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll ask for comments. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and then you can add on to it next questions. year. Because you can go up to 50, oh, you'll be able to go up to 15,000 if that gets approved. I just want to confirm this is a 28,000 square foot lot. Yes. Um, I think it's. It's, it's big. Six, seven acres. Yeah, it's big. So yeah, it's a uh, big. It's, yeah. it's a trapezoid, so it's roughly this would 315 have been by 90. Yeah. 
Yeah, this would have been a, if if this gets approved, our recommendation. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So, um, and that spirit is to try to keep so homeowners from coming to do this. He's going on a month. What do you like? Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else had a comment to come forward. Uh, nice to meet you, finally. <laughs> Not in this case. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm Larry Legas. I live at 103 Whispering Pines. I'm adjacent to Chad's new house. Yeah. Set back a little bit. And uh, I'm just needing clarification because I just really, before I got here, received that plan, I think, from Garrett, who built my house as well. And uh, it said on this uh, text that I got, it said it was 17 by 53, which didn't calculate out to be 901 square feet. So I haven't had a chance to look at the plan, but he's, he's got uh, if we need to do the math or I need to correct my, it could be my misinterpretation. We're all do the math. Well, it's just the math. I'd rather see the plan itself. That comes out to 901. The, well, the, uh, 17 by 53. building plan showing the dimensions. Because I'm trying to figure out, does that plan meet what he's doing? If not, I just want to know. I mean, I'm not just questioning the fact that 901 is one number and that the information I got was 17 by 53. Yes. I just heard 17 by 90. No, 17 by no. 53 is 901. 901. It's not, right, it's oh, 901. Yeah. yeah, in his letter it's 1753, which is 901. Okay. 17 by 53. Okay. Yeah, this is I, got a, I got a question. Yeah. You don't have to come yeah, up this, this one. This How wide is, is the is property? Yeah, you're you're fine, right? right? That is correct. Yeah. I'm fine with that square feet. Right. Okay. But I do have some other comments I'd like yeah, to put out just to thought. Sure. Uh, being as close as I am and he is to the beach and to the velocity area and all the things, uh, knowing full well what happened in 2005, um, I'm very aware of it. Um, there was an issue of obviously a snowball effect from the buildings. Yes, in, in the area specifically where I am everything rolled up to the tracks and did for quite a ways. And I think that there should be some more consideration to beachfront properties or within a reasonable range, I don't know what that would be, uh, that would kind of take into account the more structures you have, the more opportunity you have for that to happen again. Okay, in the velocity zone, which it's is the right. beach, yeah. you have to have engineering Approved drawings for the structure. Right. Well, I'm not. And you go back far enough, you don't have to have the engineering. That's that's kind of what I'm trying to get. And then the height on. is also measured differently on the beach as if, if you'd be back exactly. a thousand feet. Um, uh, yeah, my cousin has a house on the beach as well, right down yeah. the street. So I'm, I'm, he built Garrett built for him as well afterwards, and there were things that he had to do that I didn't have to do. Right. I was two lots right. removed. You were a, a 19 or something sure. probably. Larry is worried about his view. Well, no, and that's I'm not true. This house. Well, it's These are my neighbors. I'm not worried about the view. That's the house not is what on I'm the beach. It's on the beach. It's in velocity. It's not later. It's not me. And, and, and now they are higher. You know, before they were all down here, so they got walked yeah, back yeah. and and then the domino the went. So hopefully that's been mitigated. One, one second. Is there. And, and I would like to say, I do have full faith in Garrett's construction. And the way they're built today, up to the standards that are necessary per FEMA, and that's the question I had when I first got into all of this, is that I was here when I built my house in 2014, and came, Garrett came and informed me I couldn't do anything bigger than say 300, it was 300 square feet on the house. Underneath. And not to drag this out, but I said, okay, I need to go down and confirm that. So I came down to the city, and there was a lady in the front office over here, and I just said, I wanna find out about this, and is this correct? And at that time, it was still in the in the reactionary air, area of what FEMA was doing for us in the city and other cities to help us get back on our feet. And she more or less was adamant about saying, there are no variances that are gonna be given to anything that's off in, on or near the beach. And I'm not gonna say she was correct, but I only had her talk to about that at the time. So as a result, I went ahead and built whatever I could build here to inform me. But you know, that's where I thought, well, ancillary buildings are not just carports. They, can they be enclosed buildings as well, like a garage or something else? And I need to, I, I wanted to get clarification on that. And 
in terms of. It depends on where you're building. In other words, what I'm saying is if this was a and garage you you in lieu of an open air, would it still comply even on new, which I agree with? I think it's well, an open air. It, it has to open meet air. 145 or something like that wind. Uh, yeah, uh, our resistance. minimum wind load is 130. 30, okay. Um, yeah, minimum wind load is 130, but the variances that you're talking about through FEMA, we don't get variances on height of a primary structure. Accessory structures don't have to meet that height as long as they have proper venting and built out of the proper materials. Being that this is open, there is no flood restriction. There's no water restriction. Okay. Right. Um, if you're going to, you, there's not supposed to be any accessory structures on the ground, period, in a V zone. Okay. Um, where he's positioning the accessory structure is out of the V zone, right. it's in the AE. So they meet all of FEMA's requirements. Okay. I'm just trying to get clarification with all this. And it does I, say in the permit, yeah. open air. So really. Yes, and yeah. I saw it's, that. It's and I, I was actually, I sent in a, a email today to yep. you, yep. which I have to apologize for because I got incorrect information about what was going to be built. I was under the assumption that it was going to be a structured garage storage type of door. thing and not an open air. Well, that's the purpose apartment. of these so, meetings. Yeah. So. Bottom line is I'm okay with what he's doing. But I do have another situation that may come up uh, that I'm not going to speak about yet because it's okay. not here. But it could be in line with the same thought of someone close to the beach uh, in, in closing a garage and trying to build other things in within this garage area. And that for sure would be something I would be concerned about because it could be in front of well, me. Well, we'll speak to that one when it comes exactly. up. But I'm trying to get the clarification yeah, yeah. at this point. Anyway, that's Thank it. you. So I do appreciate it. Appreciate you. Anybody else? Uh, Come forward. There is some little bit. To, they can somehow get around. He alluded to it. Uh, if you add the accessory building under, with the same roof line. It becomes part of the main structure. But yes. if it's raised, yeah, he, has it's to raised. Rake, he has to raise it. So yeah. that's part. I think you can do open air to keep them, but I know you can't do walls. Right. Yeah, in an A zone, you can, you can do a complete garage. Yeah, you, close you it. Do 15 on the ground. Feet, yep. Where his house was an A zone, to answer his question. If the person he's talking about wants to build a garage, they can build a garage up to 1,500 square feet with its solid right. walls. But they have to have fence. Yep. And I don't, in a B zone, you cannot do walls. No. You can do an open air. The, first, the lowest horizontal member, which would be the band where the roof is, has to be above that flood line. Yep. And that meets FEMA. So anything, though, I'll tell you, your building department, on this thing, I didn't think we got to do a drawing. I thought he'd let me do a nice hand drawing. He told me no. He said, I want a full drawing, strapping, foundation, and that's where the drawing's going to affect. So they are pushing it. Where well, we were still were going to do it, but I hand drew it. And he said, no, I would like a drawing. So we had someone draw a plan. So they are sticking up to it. And one thing, one thing to add, since he said that, and that was okay. that if that's the case, if someone does say they want to build a garage enclosed mm -hmm. in front of me within an AE 2019 zone, they still have to build up to the AE 19 level. So how could they build a garage? No. No, no, no it's accessory no, structure. Not accessory structure. Not, yeah, not accessory structure. Okay, well that's what I'm yeah. Yeah, trying to not, do. Not accessory structure. And, and I'll tell you where I'm thinking about with a lot of these is the flood zone doesn't make our city necessarily better. Being able to use our property makes our city better. And that's just how I'm always going to look at these things. I want people to have access to their property and all the debris was on top of my house in Katrina. So it's like it was 30, 40 feet high. And by the way, I but I also like where I live. So I want I all my neighbors to be able to use their property. I lived so on Lakewood. Whispering Pines had the most damage of any street in the entire city. So I've got a picture of it and there is nothing but 40 slabs. We have jumped all in, in the way of you I'm saying sorry, one more comment. Wait, wait, let's, let's, let's please let me say it. FEMA did a lot for us in recovery. Yes. FEMA put their hearts and soul in us and confided in us. With that, they did restructure their rules, their flood maps, all the things that are involved in the flood insurance policies and so on. So I worry if we don't stay close to what their guidelines are, that if something happens again, they're not going to look as friendly upon us in that respect. Not for me, but I'm talking about in the overall picture of things. It's just food for thought. Okay. One, one of the aldermen, and you correct me if I'm saying this right, 
wrong, um, question whether FEMA's height elevation applied to accessory structures. It was FEMA's rather height. ambiguous. Yeah, and no. the attorney looked at it and said, no. I'm sorry you've had to wait. I know you have something. Your to name, say. please. Hi, I'm Kathy Escher, and it's my husband, Robert Escher. And we lived on Whispering Pines 105, raised our family there, two children. Um, it, the purpose is it's our family home. Um, someday have my children hope mm. to be back there. They're Navy and engineering. Um, I wrote a letter, so I'm just going to reiterate what I put in the letter without sure. you know, expanding all over the place. Um, the way I'm, I read in the planning and zoning, conditional uses would not be appropriate generally. So that's kind of ambiguous. Um, but we are in total opposition to the construction of a 901 square foot accessory structure on that property. Um, it, it could be an eyesore. Um, especially when the gentleman expounded about everything he wants to put in that 901 square feet. And it can be a detriment to the surrounding properties. Um, a myriad of other uses can occur in the future as an open or an easily enclosed structure. It can become RV storage, a boathouse, equipment storage, a rental, a VRBO, a family guest suite if they enclose it in sometime in the future. Um, it can be a hazard to the surrounding properties, as Mr. Poindexter uh, pointed out. Um, if the hurricane comes, that roof can become a missile and land on somebody's property, on somebody's house. I can testify that we had a very sturdy garage on our property on Whispering Pines. We were the third lot in and it landed down the street, the whole entire roof, just picked up down, down the street. Um, also, it can uh, evaluate the property adjacent when you look out and you see this large structure out there and the residents intended to construct this structure in the initial planning as the footing, and I sent pictures of everything to mm -hmm. John, um, the footing was poured when the concrete um, was poured for the home. So it was always in the plan to do something back there. They just didn't do it when they were putting through their initial application for a home. So I just ask you to please deny this application and that you protect the integrity and the beauty of Whispering Pines and I move. Thank you. I love just one thing, he cannot put plumbing toilets back in there, okay? So it could never be a residence to rent. Now that's on one side. On the other side, since he has over 15,000 or 16,000 square feet, he is permitted to build a mother-in-law building that I guess technically he could. Yeah, because you know, I think we all know. Well, no, he couldn't rent it. No, because it's still R1. Yeah, but you could build a. He could have a guest house for personal use. He, yeah, he get a guest house. Thank you. In, he could have a guest yeah. house. But he could but be it, RBO the main house, right now. So yeah, look, I'm glad you love Waveland as much as I do because like this is my home. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate what you're saying. I, I will say though, again with what I'm, everybody has a lot and they have their desire to have enjoyment of that lot in the ways that they do. And sometimes it's not. It's not in the way that. We would like this you know and sometimes it, it, it it's a little unknown but where we're heading with this is this would have been this wouldn't have never even come for a variance is what we would like to uh to change on it he could have built a 500 square foot uh structure without asking what he's asking for in a very big lot is to add an extra 401 square feet mm -hmm. which i don't think is unreasonable for, for the size of the lot he has. And I'll just tell you why, the, because. Well, have you seen, I mean, the lot is, um, has a black, like wrought iron fence, where the, they built up the land, and then there's also a lake down below in wetlands. So he's built his property up, 
So he's literally taking his fenced in area and taking the home, the swimming pool, and then this broad. He never built the property up. I've been there before him. Mm -hmm. No, I'm Before the Whispering Pines, before the storm. No, he never I'm built sorry. it up. He never added no, more dirt. No, no I, I never did. She wants to say something. She can come up. Yeah, she will. I don't need yeah. any more. Uh, well, I just want to tell you well, how And I then feel. the other thing about, the, about a structure like that, and I think we all can relate to this is a lot of people cover their patio, then a lot of people take that covered patio and they screen it in, and then they glass it in, and then they make it into a room. Um, so I, I just have a problem. I mean, it's such a, a beautiful area, and then people just start putting up structures to me. Kathy, where do you live now? Do you live wait, 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 wait. No, just curious. She's not really a neighbor. She's going home if, home if you home. need to come up and speak, we'll give you an opportunity to. <laughs> wait, let's, let's just let's finish up Thank anything you, you want to say. I don't want this. To right. that, but that's, I just okay. ask for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Now, would you like to come up and make another comment? No. Okay. Just curious. Who doesn't live there? Excuse me. All right. Um, in, in, anybody else uh, want to talk? Anybody else? This? And then do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve it. Uh, a motion by three, seconded Second. by two. No further discussion. We'll vote. Yes. Two. Yes. And two and three vote yes. All of these, these are recommendations, and they go to the aldermen who say yay or nay. So anybody can speak at that forum with the aldermen. All right, item number six. Joel Lee, owner of the property commonly known as 9881 Highway 63, has made an application to rezone this property from R1 single family residential to C3, i.e. commercial, highway commercial in order to continue the dis district use with this commercial property next door at 9919 Highway 3, 603. Mr. Lee here. Okay. Um, anybody want to speak pro or con? All right. I've got a question. I mean, I, I want to ask some questions on this. Okay. You want to table it? Obviously, you're going to. Well, who you, you want to No, I question? can ask the genre. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, why don't we get a motion that we can discuss? Um, okay. I'll make a motion to discuss. Second. Second, then, okay. Everybody voted yes. Uh, all right, yeah. yes. I need, or is not all of Highway 63 is not commercial, is it? They've got. Because you've got. Yeah, they, they've. Golf Auto here, you've got the apartment complex, and then he's wanting to put it right here. There's woods there now. Woods. Mm -hmm. And across the street is commercial building. and. Well, uh, yeah, Golf Auto Direct is, is across the street. He's on. No, no. Yeah, he's, he's not oh, on Gulf okay. Auto Direct side. He's on the other well, side. Well, that's commercial. All, all of it's commercial, isn't it? This one little property that's on the corner, on the corner. not, is residential. One so Well, Michael. Uh, that's, what he's, that's what he's asking, to, to change it. it to commercial. I got it. Okay, you answered my question. Um, but no, they've, they've got small, they've got random properties all along Highway 603 that are not commercial. They're residential. How far did we notify the neighbors of this? 300 feet around. 300. Was that the requirement when it's yes. changing zoning? Yep. Yes. Okay. And did anybody write in or Not about comment? this one, no. I haven't gotten any correspondence about this one. All right. And we want to have a motion to approve the I tonight. make a motion to approve the changing to All right. A uh, motion by two, seconded C3 by three highway. Yeah, I'm, uh, because it's 603 and no one has spoken up against it, I'm going to make a motion to approve it because it's, it's I already said that. Second. You just oh, um, you're I'm second. A, you just I'm going to second it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Put Sorry. The on some property on Waveland. No, on Nicholson and um, yeah. whatever that street is. Where they, people wanted to change the zoning and... Jeremy pointed out yeah. that there was something that you couldn't bump it up that far. He wanted it to be like an R3 and we only let it go to R2. 
Well, so no, it, he he his comment was a need. Was there a need for R three? Because R three would allow for triplexes and That's fourplexes true. and true. apartments, and we've already ha and I know which property you're talking yeah. about. There was already an apartment complex right behind, behind it. it. So he said that he would allow it for R two for a duplex. Um, he didn't want to let it go up to R three because there was already. Ooh, so you property. can you can jump that many. Especially since we, he's trying to match the rest. The rest of them, I agree. Yeah. Okay, that was it. All right, y'all want to vote? Yes. yes. Two yes, three yes. Um, passes to the zip. Percy Nixon, Jr., owner of the property commonly known as 712 Villery Street, has made an application for multiple variances in order to split the property into three new parcels. All three parcels will need a front variance of 6.61 .6 feet from the required 100 feet uh, front footage and a 3,106 square foot variance from the required 12,000 square foot um, feet area. Uh, a motion to we can discuss it. Yeah, I'll make a motion to discuss. Motion by three, second is second. Second by two. Okay. Uh, is Mr. Nixon here? Come forward, please. Just state state your name and just state your case. Yes, sir. Um, my name is uh, Perry Nixon. Okay. Um, Residents of uh, Bay St. Louis uh, bought the piece of property, um, have children, and I just, just want to see if I can split it up into three to give each one of them a piece of property. Okay. All of them have any, I mean, commissioners have any questions? No questions. Um, did we notify all the neighbors? Yep. Did we hear anything from the neighbors? No. It was, it was three. Property before Katrina to the three driveways on it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We rode by and left. No, <laughs> we do our research. Okay. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> yeah. And the property across Sycamore uh, has been divided into three. Three lots. Three Same lots also. Across the street is three lots. And this is about what we approved that duplex for to get the lots above the road, was it? I don't know. This is way, this is 93 foot frontage and about 95 foot deep there, and the lot's 93 by 95. Yeah, so That's certainly big yeah, Roughly 95 by 95 when you finish yeah. with it. Yeah. So so there's two variances, right? right. Seven well, foot yeah. frontage yeah. and 3165 yeah. of um, thing. And what you're saying, the density is about that already. Yeah. Okay. It's 88, the lot's 8,890 square feet, almost 8,900 square feet. He's only looking for 30. 3100 and then 93 foot frontage instead of 100 so the lot's about 95 by 95 if you right. want to yeah, figure it out that's 9,000 square feet that's about six square feet short of that anybody else uh, pro a con speak well, I want to vote uh, make a motion to approve Okay, motion I'll by second it to two. Second it by three. As written, no condition, nothing. No. Okay. We will vote. Um, uh, yes. Two. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Pass two zip. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. Again, yeah. all of these go we before the aldermen yes. for their final approval. Yeah, make so sure you go to the meeting. Go up at that meeting. Yes. Okay, be questions. All right, thank you. Oh. The meeting will be when? Um, it's the first Tuesday in June, June. so that's the sixth. Six. Yeah, um, also, can you state for the record that all the variances and conditional uses meet the requirements? 906.1 and 906.3. Sure. Need the what? Whenever uh, yes. a variance or condition That's is true. approved, the variances are um, approved based on the conditions of the zoning ordinance, 906.1. Yeah. Yeah. And then those are variances. Conditional uses are 906.3. So. Mr. Okay. Bryan's to say that? Yes. 
I agree with that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, do we want to have a discussion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to open a discussion. We got to uh, do it. Amend the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda just to discuss advertising the uh, the workshop for, or the whatever we're calling it for the uh, comprehensive plan. Special. Just a, it's just going to be a special hearing. Just a special hearing. I just want a short discussion on this. Okay. Do you want to have any discussion between us tonight or what, what you? I'd like to just discuss how we're going to get more people in this room. Well, okay. I mean, if you want to discuss more, we can do that. I just meant that that well, I think it'd be educational to us if you, you know, bring up you know, some of the things you're, you're concerned about so we can study them a little more also. So we um, can make an intelligent decision at the... Uh, no, I, I think I'd rather just talk about uh, just making sure this room is full of people that have opinions that we can get on it. I mean, I think that's one of the things is when we go through these things, I'd like to make sure we have as much community feedback as possible. I don't want it just to be us recommending. No, I'm not saying we'd make a decision tonight. I'm no, uh, not, not making a decision, but what I'd like to do is to figure out, make a plan, just a short plan here, and, um, and if, if we want to talk more after, we can do a separate motion, but I'd like to just talk about things we're going to try to get to to get more people here. Okay. You second? Sure. <laughs> You vote yes and three votes yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're going to put a motion to that's amend a motion the to agenda. open the discussion. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. got it. All right. So, uh, we talked about Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. And um, has that been posted yet on Facebook? Not yet, because Nothing I wanted I wanted bad. to make sure that we had everything together. I wanted to double check what you wanted me to advertise. Okay. So it's going to be a special hearing. Um, are we going to do that? The second uh, Monday in June like, based on the calendar that we had because the regular planning and zoning meeting is Monday June what is that 16th 19th I think the 19th um, and then the special meeting would be the week before that which would be what the 12th June 12th so um, the second is fine with me uh, what I'd like to know uh, is so how we're going to get more people here and then also discuss just shortly the rules of the road of how we're going to run it. Do we have the authority to mess with the city's Facebook page and, and I, make, yeah, make uh, I can't but somebody in the administration has access to the Facebook page, so all I have to do is say, hey, can you post this on the Facebook page? And, and, and same everybody will be fine with it. The mayor um, has access to the city um, website, so he can post something on the main page or, you know, post something in bold that, you know, we're going to have this meeting on June 12th. Um, can we get the Seacoast Echo? The city the, count, well, the, the Seacoast Echo, I have to advertise yeah. for it. So the Besides Seacoast, that, could we just get yeah. them to uh, see if they'll do it in their Facebook page? Because, like, I just saw a recent article about, uh, I think, Bay St. Louis 2023 or 2043. Okay. Let's see if we can get them to offer the same kind of... I'll talk to Cassandra and yeah. see what I need to do, if that's a separate um, purchase order, if I have to do that, or if that's something I just request. It seemed more like a news story okay. um, that you know they were trying to get this together, because I think that we, that's what we should approach it as. This is a news story. We want people to come in and And then what I'll, what I'll do is um, the day of the advertisement, I will put a, um, a notice on the, um, the doors, the front door and the rear door that say, Planning and Zoning Special Meeting, June 12th, to discuss amendments to the comprehensive plan. Okay. You know, please, if, you know, please attend if able, something like that. Yeah, public, public invited. Pu public comment. Encouraged. Encouraged, yes. Yeah. Public comment really encouraged. Want, so, that, you know, so if we can, if we can get Facebook, we can get maybe the Seacoast Echo, maybe even WLOX to come out and run a little uh, video on it. Just saying, hey, we want as much public feedback on this of what we want residents of Waveland come up, provide feedback of what you want our city to be yeah. and, and how you want to do it. 
Um, I know that the, the gentleman from the Shoe Fly magazine That's comes in question. for... Um, Bruce Norman. Yeah, yes. So he comes in, and I can contact Mr. Bruce and yeah, tell absolutely. him if he, can post, if he can put something in the Shoe Fly magazine. Um, Steve Coast Echo, I'll post the notices. Um, Rhonda. Miss Rhonda will put it on her website, yeah. Yeah, and the then we'll have the city Facebook page and website posting stuff too. And the, the more people we have here, I think, the better. Okay. Um, but I think we should prepare them for what we're looking for. And I think yeah. now if we can switch away from just the advertisement for a second and talk maybe about the rules of the road for the meeting, is maybe if we're expecting the audience to show up prepared, maybe we open it up for comments first and let people come out and have three minutes to yeah. say a well-prepared statement of what their vision is for a specific zone, mm -hmm. for the whole city, or something like that, so that we can hear as much feedback as possible from the people who live here. And then Stop. that, because that helps me understand what people are looking for. I know for. how to work it. You might want to just publish it on the website. What? The yeah, put well, a the link. Comprehensive Plan's already on the website. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's on the planning well, and zoning the, page. When you go to the planning make and make sure that in the advertisement or wherever you post yeah, it. Yeah, in, in the advertisement, I can put a statement that says, if you'd like to review the comprehensive plan, Thank please you. visit our website, planning and zoning page. Yeah, and, and put, uh, well, and put the actual link. So, like, on the news article, mm -hmm. um, just People go, can go and just click open it. it up, copy the link, and paste it. But mm -hmm. So anybody who talks about it, that way they can come to, um, they can go and look at it and review why we need to look at this. Because there are some things, there, people may come in and say, it's perfect, don't mess with it. Right. So, but that's the feedback that I'd like to hear um, moving forward. So, if we can advertise that, put that in, open the meeting, suggest that we open the meeting for comments first. Then we we after the comments we start to move forward and start to adjust <coughs> uh, the pieces that we want. Well, do we need a motion? Since you're that? discussing it, I've got things to say about that. Go right ahead. You sir. mentioned Bay St. Louis's comprehensive plan for 2043. Yeah. Do you realize that they're paying $140,000 to a company to write that? They probably are paying money. Yeah. What I'm suggesting is we don't necessarily go that detailed into all the demographic studies and the backgrounds of it. What I'm asking that we look only at the goals and vision of the vision statement for our city and the goals and policies for each zone. Okay. You know, if you look at and the and comprehensive how that plan. Not your decisions. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, but there is, I would think there is very little to none opportunity that we're going to be writing the comprehensive plan no, no, and no, even no. changing the visions and the goals and stuff like that which is what I'm getting you want to do, ask people for their opinions and then change the plans and the goals. And it's very noble, but it's not going to happen in here. Well, we only make recommendations to yeah. the board, so what we're going to do is we're going to listen to what the audience has to say, and then we're going to say, okay, the vision says that it wants an alley from here to the library. Well, well that's, that's obviously not going to happen. That's probably not reasonable, so let's update that. And our goal would be instead is to provide, um, you know, some other way that we want this Coleman district to look and goals up and the goals that that would meet. I think going forward, we can adopt or we can recommend changes to the comprehensive plan that are simple and declarative of what we want our city to be. And I don't think we need to go into, if you read the comprehensive plan, I think it's eight sections seven of them are about demographics, about housing, about all these different pieces, not really about what we want our city to be. It tells more what our city is already. And I don't know that we need to update that to do the zoning. As long as we don't get the residents of Waveland all hyped up about we're gonna make these changes and your opinion matters and then nothing happens. We can only recommend what, what it is, but you know, this is a good forum for the people of Waveland to come out and say what they think. I mean, that's why that's why we're here because these workshops are designed to get the feedback. And I want to hear what they have to say because if we're going to make recommendations, I want to try to 
like we had the, the lady who came out and spoke. I really appreciate it. She, she loves Waverly. You could see that. And I agree with what she was saying. I didn't necessarily agree all of her um, on, on, on that specific condition. But that's, that's what you want to hear is you want to hear what other people think. So we're not just in a vacuum. Let's, let's get the feedback. Barbara was uh, from Chapel Hill School Board School District, and they had a comprehensive plan. And she says every day, and they, it was broken down to the goals for a year, half a dozen, let's just say. And every day when they turned on their computer, there they were. And, and then they, you know, they worked on them, some of them they got accomplished, some they didn't, but then the next year they modified it. Because, you know, this is sort of pie in the sky type of stuff. You said they you know? turn on their computer and it's all there. Yeah. You turn no, on no, the no. computer with this. No, 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 no. Just, just, just the half a dozen goals for that for that year, or, or, or ever many. Right. And just just for the uh, like the sections in here. She also stated that they had department heads that rewrote yes. their plans. So what do we got in the city? Uh, so just, uh, just the, the mayor. For, for anybody in the audience, that, the, when this was adopted, the Board of Aldermen and Mayor were uh, Tommy Longo, Lily yeah. Staller, Ricky Joffrey, Brian Schmidt, and Charlie yeah. Piazza. Yeah. We've had <laughs> we've had a, a little bit of changes in our city. And all I'm asking is we have the intro. So chapter one is the introduction, how to use the plan. Chapter two is the goals and policies where I really want to focus. Chapter three is existing land use, inventory, and analysis. That's more about stuff that's already here. We it's just statistics. Statistics. Population study and projections. Statistics. Again, just statistics. Housing characteristics. Again, just information about the housing that's there. When we get to chapter six, economic and employment analysis. So. The city just spent quite a bit of money studying Highway 90 corridor. We need to implement the, the plan that they had, the city just received, we need to implement that in our com comprehensive plan for Highway 90 district and then get feedback on that. Um, chapter seven, community facilities and services. Chapter eight, transportation. Chapter nine, future land use plan. Chapter 10, the implementation plan. I think we're best served sticking in chapter two with what do we want our city to be and how do we make it um, district by district without going much deeper than that because I don't think we need to look at these other chapters. Um, I think our land use is pretty well defined. I think um, we know our, what our housing is, what our requirements are. I just think we don't know who we want to be and we need to decide who we want to be and, and make decisions from there. So I'd appreciate well, that. That's a 20-year comprehensive plan, and it was implemented in 2010. Well, it's so that means it's still I don't even know if this one was a 20-year plan. Repetitive. So uh -huh. you know this this thing about uh, extending the walkway. Yeah. it's repeated in there well, half a dozen fun. times. Yeah. As much feedback as here as possible, um, and I appreciate any support on that. I know it's a okay. a little bit. A little bit of work, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end. As an aside, sidebar, the peak uh, population was in 2000, was right at 8,000, and currently it's a little over 7,000. So it hadn't changed. It went down 1,000. Yeah. So um, if we can make the recommendation that we do those steps, do I need to make a motion to do that? No, we can just put that in a public comment because that's, yeah. that's just something that I have to advertise separately. Um, so that's. And so in the, we're going to get WLOX, the Seacoast Echo, um, Shoe, Fly. Shoe Fly, and then there's another uh, Rondo. Rondo, but there's another stage, TV station. Maybe we can get them as well. I know sometimes they do coverage on us. Get as many news outlets as possible to cover as much of the wavelength because I really do hope this is a massive success for the, for the feedback on it. And that's all I got on that. Well, Seacoast Echo could put a statement in there. Oh, other than the uh, advertising. And then also the posting at the post office and the, yeah. um, the places here. So. Okay, you finished? So yeah, that's it. Okay. City Hall. 
I'm going to put it the library and post office. All right, number nine, uh, public comments to the commissioners. I don't have anything to add. Uh, does anybody in the audience want to make any comments? Well, boy, I'll look at you, Brian. <laughs> look at you, Brian. <laughs> All right, I well, guess I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, seconded by Second. two. Unanimous vote approved, yes. 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 So. Thank y'all. Thank you all. And thank you for humoring me. Yeah. I mean, I just well, it was only twice as long as the I last Alderman meeting, but that's okay. <laughs>